Um, hello everyone. I just wanted to come out right and be real with you and say I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I did not expect to be gone for so long. Actually, it wasn't even gone. It was like I took like this really long break when I had just started my channel. I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry and thank you for still sticking with me. I can be a pain like that. Um, I have no excuse as to why I was gone for so long. I don't think anything will be worthy of telling why I was gone. All I can say is that high school, I did not expect it to be so stressful my first year. I did not expect anything like that to happen. I didn't even expect my channel to get anyone watching it. And I did not expect to get writer's block. It was honestly the worst thing for me because I felt so unmotivated. I didn't have any ideas, no nothing. And on top of that, when I had first taken the break, the about two weeks, the first two weeks, I had lost everything on my iPad during an update. I, it was one of the worst moments ever, and I do not recommend, and I hope that no one, none of you have to go through it, no one ever has to go through what I had to go through with that, because it was honestly the worst. But I'm really happy to be back, and thank you to people who kept on reminding me to stay on, like, I guess on task and everything. Because of you, this chapter came out. I'm so sorry I left it off, like, on a semi cliffhanger. I don't know. But I'm back, and I've got some wholesome content, and this one's going to be really cute. It's just a cute little filler because I wanted this one to represent a new journey because, as you know, they're going on a vacation. So I hope you really like it. Thank you. Thank you for sticking by. I'm sorry. Um, any new subscriber, I'm sorry you have to hear this. I'm sorry you have to hear me confessing how sorry I am for not being around. I swear I'm not like this all the time, only most of the time, and please like, comment, because the comments are always fun to read, and please subscribe, and I will get into it, chapter 20, Strawberry Vanilla, Unicorns and Rainbows, Marinette's POV. Nino, stop playing with your food! My goodness, you make me feel like an old lady for wanting at least some decency on this trip. Alia huffed, crossing her arms over her fuming self. Nina was hungry, again. So naturally, we all pulled over to a nearby rest stop. The car ride so far speaks for itself. Nino complaining about food while Alia sung along to every and any song that came on the radio. Adrian was making a list of to-dos at the house, and I felt like I was just there. Adrian had gotten tired of Nino's complaining and Alia's constantly, internally screaming stare like she was waiting for the torture to end. So we decided to stop to spare both Nino's stomach and our ears. So there you have it. A group of four homeless-looking teens walking into a cafe, one of them clutching their stomachs in pain, me trying to help Nino whilst clutching his stomach, Alia rolling her eyes at everyone who looked our way, which I had repeatedly told her was disrespectful, and then Adrian, sending a silent prayer to the heavens that Nino would fall into a mini-food coma on the way to the house. Yeah. We were a mess. Nina was the first to plop himself down at the table, Alia sliding in after him as Adrian and I followed. The waitress soon strode over, introducing herself as Andine. 
She had a tan hue to her skin, bright orange hair, and freckles that dusted across the bridge of her nose that had then branched out to her cheeks. So what can I get you all? She asked around. Nina was the first to order, of course. And when Undine came back brandishing the trays of pastries in her hands, Nina looked like he had just been saved. I promise we did not deny him food. Alia said to terminate any rising suspicion of the people dining around us. I laughed at how crazy we probably seemed to the others. It was a real experience nonetheless. Alia picked at everyone's dishes on the table and blogged us as we ate. Adrian had gotten a simple muffin while I had taken this opportunity to get as many snacks for the trip as I possibly could in case either Nino required them for his hungry needs or I wanted something to eat. Once we finished up with everything, Adrian's silent pleas had indeed been answered because once we got into the car, Nino knocked out falling asleep with his head resting on Alia's shoulder in the back of the car, while Adrian and I let out an aww from up front. Alia just ignored us and rewatched and edited her blog the rest of the way. Occasionally, Alia would nod off, and if Adrian or I knew a song on the radio, we'd sing along quietly before the but for the most part of the car ride, had come, it had come to an end almost as fast as it, as it had begun. Once we had arrived at the house, everyone took a step back to examine the building. It seemed as if it was towering over all of us, blocking out the sunlight. There were a bunch of dead, overgrown trees and weeds all around, and for a moment, I thought I saw a flicker of fear wash over everyone's face. It looked haunted. When I mean haunted, I mean it looked like someone ripped this house straight out of a horror movie and placed it in the middle of nowhere to be gawked at by us four teenagers. All the rest of the houses that you could consider nearby the house were at least a couple many meters away from this area. It seemed as if this house was the only one that had its own space, and it was a little off-putting. I'm sure it's fine on the inside. Adrian said as we, as he walked forward. Nuh-uh, dude. I know a haunted house when I see one, and that, my dude, is haunted, Nino said, and I had never seen him so sure of himself. At least I'll get good content for my channel, Alia said, smiling fearfully towards the house. This should be interesting, I guess. Hey, I mean, everything can't be unicorns and rainbows, right? Adrian said, grimacing towards the place we would be staying at for the next four days. Great. Just great. I'm sure we'll find some way to make the most of this predicament, though. We always find some way to make things interesting. Or stir up trouble. I guess this is just whatever comes knocking first. We all walk in. Adrian was right, in a sense. The house wasn't too bad on the inside. It had long, grand chandeliers and beautiful arches that you could walk through to get from one room to the other. We immediately decided to head upstairs and gawk at the furniture at a later date. We all headed up to the rooms upstairs. There was a plentiful amount, but the house was cold, and we weren't sure where to turn on the electricity yet, considering this house was an old model, to put it plainly. We had all decided to stay in one room, huddled around the one camping lamp that Nino had soon begun to applaud Adrian for bringing. I mean, at least we have some sheets and pillows, and some light, I said, trying to make the best of things. Nino agreed while Alia grumbled about how she didn't have reception. All of my followers are going to wonder where I've gone, she whined. What if they think I died? I just comforted Alia. There was nothing more I could really do in this situation. Her followers meant so much to her, and I felt bad. I'm sure it will all work itself out, I said, sending her a reassuring smile. Adrian was busy unpacking, and I didn't want to bother him and Nino. I really didn't know what he was doing, but I suppose you never do. Sooner or later, everything settled down. Alia was telling Nino about a scary werewolf stories, 
and Adrian and I were sharing funny videos of Ollie and Nino while keeping an eye on them both. Adrian had kept glancing outside the small frosted over window in the room. It was getting quite cold, and I couldn't help thinking Adrian was beginning to get anxious, or maybe Ollie's werewolf story was getting to him too. <coughs> A high-pitched girly scream sounded that had all of us jumping, all except the owner of the scream, Nino. Alia sat still stunned for a quick second and then she burst into laughter. Nina was clutching Alia's wrist for dear life. Alia, please say there are no werewolves in these woods, please. Alia pretended to pause and think for a moment, fijining a frown. I'm sorry, Nino, but I can't promise anything. No. If I see a werewolf, I'm running the other way. If you follow me, that's on you. But I will be a survivor. I see where your loyalties lie, Alia snickered. Poor Nino. This was going to be a long night. And that's the end of chapter 20. I am so excited to make more chapters. I will try and be as frequent as I can. I can't promise the days that I'll be uploading, but... I will upload at least every other week. If I can't, I'll, I'll figure it out, I promise. But I will not go ghosting you without notifications first, I guess. But thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for keeping up to date with this. And thanks for just being sympathetic with my art schooling and everything. Oh, by the way, I made a picture. I might insert it in now. I don't know if y'all want to see it, but yeah. So art school has been treating me harshly and great at the same time. I feel like I got better at my art and everything. So yeah, thank you for everything. Um, bye. <laughs>